write uh, some equations. Let's go ahead and talk about balancing equations and, and we'll practice a little more writing the formulas for the equations. Now, the balancing equations, the reason why we do it is that the law of conservation of mass tells us that we can ne neither create or destroy atoms. So everything that we start with, we must end up with. Now, a balanced equation has the same number of each element on both sides of the equation. Okay, for this example, we have carbon reacting with oxygen gas, and it produces carbon dioxide. Now, if we look, this equation is already balanced, okay, because we have our carbon, we have a carbon over here as well, we have two oxygens, and we have two oxygens over here as well. So it's already balanced for us. We don't really need to do anything to it. But what if it's not? So looking at this equation, we see we have carbon reacting with oxygen gas, and it produces carbon monoxide. And we see that here we have a carbon, there we have a carbon. Here on the reactants, we have two oxygens, and here on the product, we only have one oxygen. So what we have to do is we have to make it balanced. Okay, we need one more oxygen in the products. Now, we cannot just change the formula. We can't change this to CO2 because it changes what it is. It's carbon monoxide, so we can't change that. But what we can do is we can add another carbon monoxide, and that gives us another oxygen. Okay, So we've done that, but what we've done in the process is we've also created another carbon. We have another carbon, and what we can't do is we can't leave this because now it's still not balanced because where did that carbon come from? So what we do is we just add another carbon on the reactant side. Okay, So we must start with two carbons if we're going to end with two carbons, and we start with two oxygens, and we end with two oxygens. And what we see is we get, for each molecule that we have, we put a coefficient in front. Okay, so we have two carbons reacting with one oxygen molecule to produce two carbon monoxide molecules. Okay, and these numbers in front are called coefficients. Okay, that's how we balance chemical equations. Now, the rules for balancing. First thing we have to do is we have to symbol and write the correct formula for all the reactants and products. It's so very important that we have the correct formulas because if we do not, then it's impossible to balance. Second thing we have to do is we have to count the number of atoms of each type, which appear on both sides. And then we balance the elements one at a time by adding coefficients. Uh, those are the, Remember, those are the numbers in front. And we save our hydrogens and oxygens until the very end. Okay. And lastly, we always recheck our steps because it's very easy to make a careless error error when you are balancing equations. Okay, Things that you never do. Never ever change the subscript to balance an equation because if we change the subscript we're changing what uh, the equation actually is. We're changing the substance. Okay, um, Now if we're putting coefficients in, the one thing we never ever do is we never put a coefficient in the middle of a formula. Never ever do that. Uh, they only go in front, and they represent how many of each uh, molecule we have. Okay, Examples of that would be putting the 2 in ACL and just putting it in the middle. Can't do that. It's not going to happen. Okay, So our first example, let's go ahead and look at our description. We see that we have zinc metal is added to hydrochloric acid to create zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So from the previous PowerPoint, we should be able to pick out that we have zinc, we have hydrochloric acid, and it creates zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, So we take these guys and we go ahead and write them in a word equation. Zinc plus hydrochloric acid produces zinc chloride and hydrogen. And then taking it from here, we'll have to write it into the correct formulas. So first thing we have to do and realize is that we have our zinc, which zinc is just Zn because it's elemental zinc. We check, and any time you write an element, is it um, a diatomic? And no, it's not. So next thing we do is we write our hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid has the prefix of hydro. So we know that's going to be a binary acid. And chlor is telling me that hydrogen is going to be bonded with chlorine. Remember that binary means two. So we have hydrogen bonding to chlorine. Remember, we'll crisscross these guys. We have plus one for hydrogen, minus one, sorry, minus one for chlorine. We crisscross and we'll get HCl for hydrochloric acid. Now we see that when they bond together, 
what happens is we create zinc chloride. So zinc has a plus two oxidation number and chlorine is negative one. We crisscross and we get ZnCl2. And then we have hydrogen gas. So you write hydrogen, it's by itself, but remember we gotta check, is it a part of a diatomic? Yes, it is a diatomic molecule, so it's H2. And guys, realize that if we didn't put that two right there, it becomes a very, very different equation. Okay, here's it written all nice and neat for you. Our formula equation. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna balance it from here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up where we have zinc, we know we have zinc, and we have hydrogen, and we have chlorine in the reactions. And we see that we count how many we have on the reactant side, and over here we're looking at the subscripts, which tell us we only have one zinc, we have one hydrogen, we have one chlorine. And then we go ahead and we're gonna look on the product side and see how many we have of each. We see that zinc, we still have one chlorine, we have two, and hydrogen, we have two. Again, we're looking at their subscripts to figure out how many we have. So the one thing we see that's not balanced are the hydrogen and the chlorines. To change that, I'm gonna put a two right here. That coefficient is gonna distribute to both of the subscripts, which we know that both of the subscripts are one, and one times two gives us two. On both of them, and see now that it's balanced. So our balanced chemical equation is going to end up, and we have our zinc plus uh, two moles of hydrochloric acid produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, let's move on to another example. Here it says that we have uh, solid calcium metal reacts with water to form aqueous calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So the first step that we have to take is we have to take this guy and put it into a word equation. And then after our word equation, we're gonna go ahead and take it into our uh, formula equation. We're gonna write our formulas for everything. And here we see that we have calcium by itself, so it's just gonna be Ca. It's not a diatomic, so we just leave it like that. We have water, which is H2O, and it produces calcium hydroxide and hydrogen. So calcium hydroxide is an ionic compound, so we have Ca, which is going to be plus two, and we have our hydroxide, which is OH, and has a negative one charge. And we crisscross these guys, and we see we get CaOH two and then it's bonded or not bonded but the other product is hydrogen which is h2 uh, we put a two there because it is a diatomic so looking at it written all nice and neat there's our equation now let's go ahead and balance it write each thing that we have we have calcium we have hydrogen and we have oxygen okay in the reactants we have one calcium we have two hydrogens and we have one oxygen and we look and we see that in the product side, we have one calcium. Now, this two on the outside of the hydroxide gets distributed to the both of these subscripts. So now we have uh, two oxygens, and we have two hydrogens right here, plus the two hydrogens we have right there. So we have a total of four hydrogens. Okay, we see that what's not balanced, the hydrogens and the oxygens, so we're gonna go ahead and put a two right here which distributes out to both of their coefficients on the reactant side, or the coefficient distributes out to both of the subscripts. We see that hydrogen goes into a four and oxygen into a two. And we see that now we have the same number on each side, so it's balanced. Nice and neat. Here it's written, very good. All right guys, we'll do one more example. Here we see that we have solid zinc metal reacts with aqueous copper two sulfate to produce uh, solid copper metal and aqueous zinc sulfate. So here, first thing we do, again, we're going to write the chemical equation, and or the word equation, and now we're gonna write the chemical equation. So we have zinc, which is just Zn by itself, and then we have copper two sulfate. So this two tells me the oxidation number of copper, and we know it's ionic, so we have copper, which is Cu, which is a plus two oxidation number, sulfate, which is SO4, it's a polyatomic. It has a negative two oxidation number. We crisscross and we get Cu2, SO4, two, which we can break down and reduce it since the two's on the outside of the parentheses. 
into CuSO4. Okay, we see that it produces copper and zinc sulfate. So copper is just going to be Cu and zinc sulfate. So we have zinc, which is Zn with a plus two oxidation number. Sulfate is going to be SO4. Again, with negative two, we crisscross and we get Z into SO4. Two, which we now reduce down to ZnSO4. Okay, so we take it from this written equation, this formula equation, down into a balanced equation. We write what we have on both sides. We have zinc, we have copper, and we have sulfate. Okay, the reason why I'm writing sulfate is because I can see the polyatomic sulfate on both sides. So I'm going to treat it as one individual thing. It makes my balancing just a little easier. So we see we have one zinc, we have one copper, we have one sulfate on the reactant side. And on the product side, I see that I have one copper, one zinc, and one sulfate. So this is very nice because it's already balanced for me. I don't have to add any coefficients. So written all nice and neat, this is what we get.